Hello wonderful person, and looks like it didn't take us long to talk about the comet known as Borisov once again. Because turns out that we've discovered something else somewhat unusual about the comet and where it most likely came from. Let's talk a little bit more about this interstellar visitor and welcome to What The Math. So the two interstellar comets we've discovered as of today are both kind of unusual. More specifically, the first comet, currently referred to as Oumuamua, did show us some unusual properties that we've never seen before. For example, it changed its trajectory as it was passing close to the Sun without producing a lot of outgassing that's typically very common in different comets. For this reason, we actually had trouble explaining what's going on, but in one of the recent studies, its strange and unusual properties were explained um, by explaining its origin. It very likely got kicked out from the star system by passing really close to its original star. But now we have something else unusual about the second comet, Borisov. In other words, both comets were definitely different from what we expected them to be. The observations from Borisov are actually relatively recent, but are based on the long-term observations from Hubble telescope that looked at various emissions that the comet was producing. And essentially, all of these emissions started really early on, which is of course how we were able to discover it to begin with. It was found by an amateur astronomer, and he was able to see it much before any other professional was able to spot it. And so what exactly did we find about it and why is it that now we don't think it's a typical comet after all? It turns out that it's all got to do with its composition, specifically the composition that we saw as it was emitting a lot of its outgassing. And so by looking at this incredibly beautiful blue outgassing produced by the comet, and then by essentially comparing it to all of the other comets coming from our own solar system, the scientists behind the study were able to place Borisov into one of the more unusual by composition comets, specifically in regards to the amount of carbon monoxide that it has on the inside, or at least had on the inside. Now generally speaking, when we look at comets, they usually emit a lot of water, but they also emit other organic molecules like, for example, carbon monoxide. Normally, there is not that much carbon monoxide in the comets that come from our own solar system, mostly because carbon monoxide evaporates relatively far away from the Sun. As a matter of fact, if we were to look at the solar system, most of the cometary carbon monoxide would actually evaporate as far as 80 astronomical units, which is basically about double the distance of distance of Pluto to the Sun. Somewhere right here, actually. This is how far away a lot of the carbon monoxide in these comets would start evaporating. And by the time that they reach the inner solar system, it would already probably be completely gone. And so the few times when we did observe the carbon monoxide coming from certain comets, it was usually from comets that were from really, really far away distances. And this was also essentially their first time visiting the inner solar system. And so even though there was a lot of water in this particular outgassing cloud, there was also a tremendous amount of carbon monoxide, approximately three times higher than in a typical comet from our own solar system, which is of course strange, but not super strange. So what does this imply and what does this mean for the discovery of the comet and most importantly, for the discovery of the solar system or the star system where this comet probably came from? Well, first of all, it's really important to realize that Comets are basically kind of like the undigested food of the solar system. They're the leftovers um, from the beginning of the star system when essentially all of the planets and all of the other objects were being created. Whatever was left became a comet or an asteroid. And things that became ice giants or even gas giants left a lot of pieces flying around which did become comets. So basically these are objects that for the most part possess a lot of different ices, there's a lot of water here, there's a lot of organic molecules, but not as much, um, well, not as much metals really, not as much metals, not uh, a lot of silicates, so you could almost call these really large ice balls. But because compared to other star systems, our sun is actually much hotter and also much bigger, most star systems usually have red dwarfs, this would also imply that a lot of the comets coming from within about 80 or so astronomical units of distance would most likely have a lot less ices, a lot less carbon monoxide for sure, than comets coming from the outside or from faraway distances. So most comets we see normally have water which starts evaporating somewhere around here, around the asteroid belt, 
basically this is where most comets start acquiring their tail, but any other materials that are not water start evaporating farther away. In other words, a good way of trying to see where the comets came from and also what their origin could be is by looking at their composition. And so by studying and by looking at Borisov comet, the scientists behind the study you can find in the description below discovered that it very likely came from a much cooler star. And there's a really simple reason for that. A star like our sun would very likely completely evaporate all of the carbon monoxide we're observing way, way before the comet even made it to our solar system. However, a star like the nearby Proxima Centauri, the closest star to us, which is a red dwarf, much smaller, much cooler star, would not actually have enough energy to um, essentially strip the comet of carbon monoxide. And so a comet that most likely got kicked out of the star system by interacting with some sort of a planet somewhere, if it was coming from the red dwarf system, would actually still have enough of ices, enough of things like carbon monoxide that we observed from Comet Borisov. So the obvious implication here, of course, is that this here came from a typical red dwarf. Now, we don't really know which one, but this is a good chance for us to study what red dwarfs are made out of, and thus, of course, study what some of these planets around red dwarfs might be made out of. And so far, it looks like they're made of ices and basically water. Very similar composition to what we have here in the solar system, but a little bit farther away, basically objects like Neptune and Uranus. And because we believe that comets probably brought water to Earth as well, and very likely distributed all sorts of organic compounds, and possibly even kick-started life on the planet, we do believe that discovering their origin, and of course studying comets from other star systems, is extremely important in looking for extraterrestrial life. And in some sense, this is really great news for systems like TRAPPIST-1, where we still are not particularly sure if the terrestrial planets here possess any kind of water. And judging by what we're looking at coming from this particular comet, if TRAPPIST-1 was made from similar comets like Borisov, it's a lot more likely that these objects are filled with all sorts of carbon compounds and of course a lot of water as well. Thus of course increasing the chances for finding life on these objects quite dramatically. Now carbon monoxide is an extremely important compound for the development of life, even though technically it's also dangerous if you breathe it in, but carbon monoxide in general is basically one of the most essential molecules on the planet. So finding a comet with so much of it, and also obviously water, is a really, really, really good sign. Now, what do we need next? We of course need another comet, another interstellar comet, preferably sometime soon. And the only reason for this is that because by finding another third comet, we'll be then able to analyze the differences between all of these comets and try to understand what the typical composition of interstellar comets is, and most importantly discover what the other star systems could actually have inside of them. And even though this particular discovery might not sound too exciting, it's definitely not interstellar life that we've discovered, these types of discoveries are actually the way for us to discover alien life. By trying to trace back where these comets came from, and then trying to discover what sort of planets exist in these star systems, we might be able to find that one planet that actually does have habitable conditions and thus have life. And if it wasn't for Hubble telescope, we wouldn't even be able to discover any of this. It's actually the ability of Hubble telescope to see the ultraviolet emissions extremely, extremely accurately that allowed us to understand and see these emissions in a lot of detail. But obviously, until the next interstellar comet comes our way, we're going to keep looking keep trying to find another comet or another answer to the ultimate question of life out there in the universe. So unfortunately, until we discover more, that's kind of all we know about the Borisov, and that's all we know about interstellar comets and other star systems. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider watching some of the previous videos about comets, where I discuss a little bit more information about these discoveries. And also don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon and it does help me quite a lot. And you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. On that note, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.